You're listening to the Co-Creator Network. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Hey, everybody. This is Maxine Taylor with another edition of Move Into the Magic. And I am thrilled to introduce to you today James Gilliland. Some of you know him. Many of you know him. Uh, But for those of you who may not, when I tell you just a little bit about him, you will understand why he's my guest and why I'm so thrilled to be able to ask him questions uh, about his magnificent work and about his beautiful books. Uh, James is a best-selling author. He's an internationally known lecturer. And in fact, he's going to be speaking at the Contact in the Desert Conference at the end of this month. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with that because I've been inter- interviewing many of the guests there. He is um, a minister, a counselor, a multiple near-death experiencer, and a contactee. Now, you know why he's my guest today, right? He is a visionary dedicated to the awakening and healing of humanity and the earth. He teaches higher dimensional realities from his own experience. I think I'm going to just stop here and let James speak for himself. James, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Big hug. Welcome to, to move into the magic. Wish I could reach through there and give you a big hug. And- oh, absolutely. Me too. Someday we will. Someday we will. Now, for our listeners who may not be familiar with you, can you please give us a background, take as long as you like, about your first contact with star beings and what happened to you after your... Now, I know you've had multiple near-death experiences. Just choose one of them. Okay. Yeah, I'll go through the near-death experience because that led into the contact. But uh, at about five years old, I had uh, bronchial pneumonia, and I was in the hospital, and and uh, I was kind of in between worlds. I kept going in between worlds, and they kept telling my parents they didn't think I was going to live through the night. And I kept uh, having an appearance come to me, and it was a woman in blue. She was, um, you know, just beautiful, and she would talk to me and stroke my head, and then I would pull out of it. And, and that went on for, for a few days. And then finally she gave me a substance and told me to eat it. And it was like, kind of like ice cream, but it wasn't cold. It was like white substance. And when I ate this substance, I was never sick again. After that. I didn't miss a day of school and uh, pulled right out of it. So it was kind of like this miracle transition. Like one day I was dying, the next day I was totally well. And, and that was, the, and I didn't know who that was. And, and I want to do a little disclaimer. I'm not Catholic. I'm not religious. Basically, I, I think it's all encompassing. But it turned out to be Mary. And uh, and so I, I found out later it was Mary, which was quite interesting. But uh, so I've had a long, you know, ongoing contact with her. Very, We've been very close throughout my whole life. And, and that was the first experience. And the second one was at about the age of 25, I had a drowning where I was out body surfing and there's like eight to 10 foot waves. And uh, I, I was captain of the water polo team and swim team and all that, you know, it's like, I was not, uh, I felt like I was bulletproof in the water. And, and I was very humbled by these 25 foot waves that came in. Out, there were sneaker waves and they came in out of nowhere, but uh, that's all well, well documented. I mean, they went back and when they did the movie contact has begun, they went back and went to the exact date and got the articles, you know, when, when that happened, because a lot of people were were injured. They, these waves came in; and they just cleaned all the fishermen off the jetties. Everything it was it was a real mess. But um, but anyway, that uh, in that experience, I went through the tunnel everybody talks about, and I ended up in this golden white light that was just pure consciousness and energy, and it was the most blissful, secure, loving energy you can imagine. There's no words that can describe it. And I had a conversation with it, you know, while I was there. And so it's hard to understand, but while you're there, you, you're unique, yet you're one at the same time. So you're, you're both. You have, you have a unique part of yourself that's aware of, of what's happening around you, but you're one with this greater consciousness at the same time. And so I had a, a conversation. The first thing I said was, how can I stay? And, and it 
came back to me and it said, it said, uh, you know, I never told my children when to come or go. That's free will, you know? And so I'm going, all right. You know? And I said, the next thing was, I asked, how can I earn the right to stay here? You know, I said, what? And <clears throat> because I had some old programming and it came back to me and it said, you cannot earn what is given freely and unconditionally. And so I'm going, oh, wait a second, this isn't the image of God I was given. You know, I thought it was this little old man, you know, with a laptop and a lightning bolt, you know, taking notes and going to toast anybody. There's a bad doobie. <clears throat> and so, uh, <clears throat> so anyway, so that was my experience with this energy. And, and the next thing I asked was, was how can I serve? You know, how can I give? You just want to give back. You're so grateful for the experience. And uh, it came back to me. Uh, I was there for a while. It didn't answer for a while. It was just floating in this pure bliss. They they say it, you're being held in the in the cradle of God or whatever. There's different names for that experience when that happens. And uh, and finally came back to me and said, "What do you want to do? What brings you joy?" And you know, I was waiting for the big list. You know, go go tell Bobby. You know, his wife's with us. His dog's with us too. Everything's cool. You know go heal Betty Sue or something. I didn't know what, you know, I was waiting for the big list, right? All these things that God wanted me to do. And there wasn't one. There wasn't a list. And he just said, what do you want to do? What brings you joy? And I thought about it and I said, I said, you know, this energy is just pure bliss. It's pure joy. And the more we get in touch with our authentic self and what brings us joy, the closer we are to God. It's that simple. We don't need all the complex religions and everything else. It's just, it's a matter of focusing on love and joy and bliss until you become it. And that's what the lamas I studied with told me as well. But the, um, they, uh, after that experience, I said, I want to come back and teach people about the true nature of God and dispel these images of these wrathful gods and punishing gods and, and these control programs. And the last words I heard were, as you wish. And the next thing you know, I was back in the body and they're pulling me out of the, out of the water. Wow. Wow. What a magnificent, magnificent experience. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> now, you've had more than one near-death experience. Were they all that beautiful? Yeah. You know, I didn't stop on the lower planes. There's a lot of different levels because when I went through the tunnel, I was going through all of these levels very quickly. And... Uh, you know, I skipped the relatives and I skipped everything else. I just went right on through. Uh -huh. I had a lot of past lives as, as llamas and monks and things like that. So I had a lot of inner training that taught me what to do. And so I just, that kicked in when it happened. Awesome. Now, let's talk about star beings. Yeah. Please. Okay. <clears throat> well, what happened after that is that I was just driven, you know, to help people. And I started teaching inner sensitivity training and self-mastery training and things of that nature. And so I was working on teaching um, these classes, you know, process-oriented therapies and things like that. And uh, uh, I kept having visions of the ranch over and over again. And I was in Santa Cruz, California at the time. So I kept having these visions over and over again. And then... I didn't know where it was, and I pulled out a map of the United States, and I used some divination techniques and found it. And what's funny is I threw the map away and forgot about it and ended up here anyway. Through a, a series of synchronistic events, I ended up here anyway. So it was kind of funny how that happened. But <laughs> uh, uh, when I got on the property and I saw the property, it was exactly like the visions. You know, the mountain just opened up, and it had this beautiful lenticular cloud that lit up from the bottom. And it turned in, it looked like something out of the movie, the Old Testament, you know, the mountain starts changing and all these, these weird formations and beautiful colors. And then I looked up and I had two bald eagles right over me circling and, and just energy just running through me like crazy. I, I got tears just crying. I had so much energy coming through me. And I knew this was it, this was the place. And so I was here for about 10 years and I was having information coming to me and, and talking with other dimensional beings and masters and, and uh, clearing a lot of unseen negative influences as well, clearing those energies out. I was trained to do that. And uh, all of a sudden one day I, I heard this beautiful voice of feminine energy was coming to me and, and uh, 
talking about the condition of the earth and what we need to do to for the awakening healing process to help assist and you know very high consciousness and and so I asked I said well what where are you coming from I thought she was going to come say I'm coming from the fifth or sixth dimension or whatever and she said that she said well we we operate on the fifth and sixth and I said I said interesting and I said um and then she said well actually we're on a ship and uh <laughs> Then I said, wait a second, you know, I, I'm focused on masters and, and hired other beings and I'm not, I'm not re- ready for the ship thing. You know? So I thought I was losing it. I thought I was losing it. And I, I, I said, I'm going to go out and start planting trees and forget it, you know? And, <laughs> and so I didn't even make it to the front door and my sister and a couple of my friends came up running up the door and said, did you see it? Did you see it? And I said, see what? And they said, the ship, you know, there's this huge light ship hovering right over the ranch here right over the bridge house. So, so that was interesting. So then I had to, to kind of incorporate that into my spiritual practices. Wow. Well, now you mentioned the ranch and a lot of people may not know what you're uh, talking about when you say that. Will you please explain what the ranch is, what ESETI is, and what is the mission behind it? Well, it's kind of interesting because I'm sitting in a bridge house right now, a house built out of a bridge, and uh, we're kind of bridging the gap between dimensions, you might say, here, between the star nation and the earth, and even the nature kingdom and the earth, and things like that. So it's a very eclectic place. The, the star nation, they refer to it as a stargate, and so, so they call it the East Eddy Stargate. And uh, we have ships coming in and powering up over us constantly and, you know, flying in and out. And then right in front of me is this beautiful mountain, Mount Adams. And uh, there's a door that opens in the middle of the mountain. And this huge light door opens up with this kind of force and ships coming in out of that as well as beings. And uh, the Native Americans call it the fairy lights, you know, up there. They said, don't go there. They're kind of afraid of it. They don't want to go up there in that area because it freaks them out. You know, but uh, we go up there all the time. <laughs> but, but the uh, uh, it's it's intense energy. It's really strong energy there up there, and you know, crazy things happen. Some people aren't prepared for it. But but it's a it's kind of a magical place. It has a long history of UFO activity, uh, going back to the Native Americans. You know, their legends it, with the Crystal City. You know, at the in the inside the mountain and very advanced beings there. And then you've got uh, actually Kenneth Arnold, who coined the word flying saucers, lost sight of the ships when they landed on the western slopes of Mount Adams. And that's basically my front yard. So, uh, you know, uh, David Akers, Greg Long have done research and written books about it. Um, even Dr. Jalen Hynek has done research up here and, and saw the ship and didn't know what to make out of them. Well, wow. You are, of course, obviously an experiencer, but if somebody com- when somebody comes to East City for the first time and they come to the ranch, what are they likely to experience? Uh, everybody's going to ask this question. Yeah. Will they see UFOs? Of course, as you said, they're circling constantly. But what kind of experience can they expect? You said some crazy things happen. Yeah. Will you give us an example. Well, you know, it depends on your consciousness and your levels of sensitivity, because if you're, you know, pretty much on the path to enlightenment or awake, you're going to have all kinds of, you're going to have contacts, you're going to have, see things clairvoyantly, you're going to have all kinds of things happen. A lot of the common folk that are just beginning will come here and they'll see uh, a huge light ship come over and it'll power up, just light up the whole sky and pulse them and they'll flow energy. Uh, and then they'll see it do some weird turns or things like that. You know, that's pretty common here. And, and that's like the tease, you know, the, to, to get people interested in these things. But, you know, we tell people it's not so much the visual experience of the UFOs. It's an inner, inner thing that happens. It's an inner sensitivity training program that you can go through to where you can have your own contact and, and work with these beings. Because most of them aren't even on this dimension. They're, they're coming in from another dimension and dropping in and, and saying hi, you know, and then they go back to wherever they came from. But uh, there's everything happening here. We have the metal ships, you know, and less dense physical ships, and we have pure energy ships and energy beings on them. 
And then we have magnetized light chips. And the beings on them have magnetized light bodies and, and Merkabas. And there's orbs everywhere here. Just it's, it's like an orb fest here. It's the whole, with the conference, we have our conferences, which we're having July 2nd through the 5th here. Um, the whole building turns into orbs. It's just wall to wall, you know, orbs. And, and uh, so there's a lot more people that, that show up than in the physical, you might say. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm sure people, after hearing this, everybody is going to want to be there, um, especially first time. Well, I say especially. Everybody's going to want to be there. I did not give out your contact information, your website. Will you do that now, James, so that uh, they can get in touch with you? Yeah, the best way to get in touch with us is go to Reservations at gmail.com. And the website is, is basically eseti.org. It's E-C-E-T-I dot org. E-C-E-T-I dot org. Uh, now, for those people who want to contact, I mean, naturally, if they're going to come to the ranch, they're, they're going to be full out. They're going to want the experience. Do you teach people how to contact their star family? Is this something that you do? Yes, yes. We do a transpersonal release session here where we take people and we start off, we clear out any unseen negative influences and make it a sacred space for them to, to have their own experience. And then we go into past lives and we clean those up and we go into the ones they need to know about because a lot of us have these star nation connections that we're not aware of. And we've actually been these beings. We just don't remember because because we've been indoctrinated, you know, we think we're a personality and a body, and that's it. And we're stuck in social consciousness. So when we open those gates or those doors, people start having, you know, their own contacts, and and we actually go through through uh, childhood and go from age one and pull any major traumas out, because we have to rise to the occasion. We have to clean up our consciousness so we can interface with these beings. Is there, they're very spiritually and technologically advanced beings. And so we take people through that process. And then we also teach ambassador training where we teach people who's who in the universe and we bring the different groups in so people can actually experience them. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things we do here and we're always doing like meditations and, and, and things. And this is the, the information on this is available at eseti.org, correct? Yeah, yeah, it says eseti collaborations. You should say events, but if you go to eseti.org and click on, on the eseti collaborations, that'll come up. Oh, I think it's marvelous. And you do these on a regular basis, James? Yeah, yeah. We're, we close down, you know, around Christmas or, or, uh, or, you know, December. We start, it depends when the snow starts coming down. So we get, we get snowed in here pretty, you know, and it, it could be anything from like this last year, we had hardly any snow at all, but we've had up to 12 feet of snow at times too. So, so it's, it's kind of rough getting in and out. So, so rather than deal with that, you know, and digging everybody out all the time, we just close, close the doors until spring. Um, where, where is the ranch located? We're right at the base of Mount Adams in Trot Lake, Washington. In Washington. Yeah. Do you have direct air flights to that? Not to your door, but. Well, Portland. People fly into PDX, Portland, and it's only like a little over an hour from Portland. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. That, that's an easy trip. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, um, let's get back to contacting your star family because I think people are very, very interested in that. Um, how do you define star family? And. Uh, What's the most important thing to remember when you're setting an intention to contact them? I mean, you're not going to go, hi, here I am. Yeah. Well, I think one thing is it's very important to address this with humility and not come from the ego and demand, you know, show yourself and do a trick for me. And, you know, it's, they're not, it's not a pony trick thing, you know. So, so people that come up with that attitude a lot of times are disappointed. But you have to have an open mind, a loving heart, and pure intent. And when you focus that energy out, you focus that love and joy and bliss, fill your body up with it and send it to them. They're extremely telepathic, and they'll pick it up. And the more you do that, the more you set the intention of having a contact, the more you do that, the more 
the closer things are going to happen. And, and so they, they want us to really evolve spiritually more so than looking just for a ship. They don't want us to be using our outer senses so much as developing our inner sensitivity. And, and we do a lot of training in that area to teach people how to do that. When you say you do training, does this have to be done in person? Can this be done over the internet? Do you have C DVDs? What What do you offer? Yeah, yeah, we have. There's a movie that that was on um, Netflix, and when the trailer came out the first week, it got something like 28 million hits. It was like crazy. It, it really went out there. But it's called Contact Has Begun, and and it's on Netflix, and you can go to the website and get it as well. But it's a beautiful movie and covers everything. The near-death experiences, incredible special effects and and the different groups and why they're here and things of that nature. And they also have lectures. I've been all over the all over doing lectures. So uh and those are on DVDs that people wanna want to get those. And so uh and that's in there. And then the books is the best way to if you want uh the first book, I, I have that one here. It's uh it's uh, Reunion with Source, and that's that's this book right here. It's a little glare on it, but uh, Reunion with Source. And this one, it, it's actually a channel book from Ezekiel, an ascended version of Ezekiel, who merged with a feminine energy by the name of Cassia. And so it's coming from like a, a God self level, a very balanced uh, message. And the, 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 the ETs, I asked them who Ezekiel was, and they call him the God of eternal bliss. So... So that's the, that's how they know Ezekiel. It's just a pure blissful energy, but uh, it covers everything from the the tools and techniques. You know, tools how to heal unseen negative influences, like who's who. It talks about the different dimensions, who's who in the universe, and and also it clears up our ancient history, so we can understand. Because you know, a lot of people, when you say the word God, I think we shouldn't even use that word anymore. We should have another word for it because it's so screwed up <laughs> with all the different man-made agendas and programs but uh we have these images and that we we've had through experiences even past life experiences and things like that and most of them are false i mean they're not accurate and we've had interactions with extremely evolved beings here and some were technologically evolved tyrants and some were very loving and very uh, service oriented and so, so you, you know, you have the all loving, all forgiving God, and then you have the jealous, wrathful tyrant, you know, that uh, is a genocidal maniac, you know. So, so people have both images and they try to put them together as one and it just doesn't work. So, so we had, at one time, we had two gods that we were dealing with, you know, especially the Old Testament God. And, uh, and if you, he was, he was a genocidal maniac, I hate to say it, but he, uh, you know, he slayed village after village. He, you know, he killed every living thing there and, and bashed babies' heads on rocks till their brains came out. And I mean, the orders that he gave were just, and it's all in the Bible. I mean, read about it. It's in the ancient text. They, you know, a lot of people call him Jehovah the Terrible, you know, and that was the, the Jewish people referred to him as Jehovah the Terrible. And you couldn't mention his name or they'd stone you, you know. It's like, that's how messed up it was. And then when Jesus came, he goes, I bring to you a new covenant, a new image of God. And he said, you know, my God is all loving, all forgiving, you know, different. You know, I, he goes, I don't judge you, nor does my father judge you. You know, and he says, go and sin no more. He said, stop doing things that are causing harm or reactions, you know. So it's, it's very simple. But, you know, he brought a whole new image, which was the a different God. And a lot of people have a hard time with this. But Yahweh was the God that Jesus aligned himself with and, and he was the all loving all forgiving he was the god of love and peace he was actually a pleiadian god he was he was aligned with the pleiades and and so uh there's just different groups you know uh jehovah was an old anunnaki warrior you know he was he was uh messed up you might he was a defeated warrior that didn't like anybody you know you know, and he, he hated the people be here because they were the ones that defeated him earlier. And, and Earth was colonized a long time ago, and a lot of those people were still here. And so he came to punish, you know. So people don't understand the real history. If they knew the real history of Earth, they'd understand. But the reason I'm giving this information out is because, you know, when people try to connect with God, they, you know, they're, they're kind of going like this. They're going, okay, I, 
you know, I want to connect with you, but don't toast me. You know, if I do anything wrong, don't hit me with a lightning bolt, you know, or uh, don't throw me in everlasting hell, you know, for, I mean, what kind of a father would do that to his kids anyway? But uh, the, uh, and so we have to understand where those images came from and where that fear came from, because we had some really bad encounters, you know, in the past. And, and I'll tell you one, if people want to just read Ezekiel, you know, and, and, you know, there's, there's a shiny disc comes out of the firmament. It has bronze feet like calves. It has fire and brimstone coming out from underneath it. When it lands, you know, it sounds like a thousand rushing rivers. You know, it's going coming down. You know? And then out of it steps this man that they refer to as God, you know. And, and he tells six of his men with their shattering weapons to go and destroy all the men, women, and children of Israel. Okay, how can six men destroy a whole city? I mean, there's... You know, they don't have bows and arrows. You know, they, they had shattering weapons. They had these sonic blasters and things that they just leveled the city. And so so basically, you know, when you understand this and what happened in the past, and, and then after that, he's, he ordered uh, a man dressed in all white linen, a, gar, a white suit, to reach into the bowels of the cherubim, cherubim, I mean, pull out hot coals and spread them around the city. He said, henceforth, anybody who comes here will die a hideous death. Their hair and fingernails will fall out. There will be food for the raven and the beast, you know, for the next hundred years. So, so <laughs> that's radiation, basically. You know, that's, that's what radiation does. And so when we understand this encounter, and, and this is this graphical God image that we have, it was not God. It was an involved tyrant that had technology and that came and wanted to be worshipped and demanded worship and, and just pretty much you know, destroyed anything in his way that did not bow down to him. Mm. Well, I, I could sit and listen to stories like that all day. And I know that one of the things that you do is you dispel myths yes. uh, that are given out, uh, created and uh, dispensed by dis the disinformation system is what it said in your bio. And I loved that. Uh, can you uh, bring that up to current time? Well, yeah, we're still dealing with that image. You know, we're still dealing with those programs that it's it's like a cultural wound or something, or or, or humanitarian wounds. You know, that we're we're cleaning up, that we're still running. And uh, also, too, as far as the other stuff, the far, especially ufology, it is just replete with with disinformation and shills and. Planned, planned opposition, you know, people in the highest levels that people worship and go to them and don't realize that they actually have strong, you know, intelligence ties and, you know, and, and uh, are there to control the information and control the flow of information. Yes. And I noticed that your approach is a very loving, positive approach. And in uh, the, uh, world of UFOs and extraterrestrials, what I've observed is that there are two schools of thought. One yeah. is that there are these terrible people, terrible entities uh, who are out to destroy us. Just, I mean, I know we're a third, we're a third dimension and it's a, it's a world of opposites, it's a but or and. Uh, raising the level involves looking at the positive. How do you, will you comment on that for us? Because a lot of people still believe it's a jungle out there, Maude. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we do have to touch on the dark side a little bit because, you know, there are, there's a thing called the Archon Network and or the Traconian Network. Everybody has different words for it. And there are some low-level ATs that are controllers and manipulators and conquerors and, and they care nothing for humanity. And uh, if, you, if you climb the hierarchical ladder of power and wealth right now, you'll see they're at the top of it. And then they have their puppets, which are the Illuminati and the banksters and these other people. And so that's been going on for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and there's a huge cleanup going on. And so the good news is most of the universe is benevolent. And the benevolent star nations are elder brothers and sisters are returning right now. And there's a massive cleanup. And I just got word last night, actually, there was, they, they said, you know, in the high 80% of it has, has been cleaned up. 
and they they told me they just removed the, the the last of these reptilian entities, the really nasty ones that were left. They just finished cleaning that up, and uh, I guess they finally surrendered and said we're out of here. And so they're they're moving them on back to wherever they belong. And uh, there are there's still some more cleanup going on, but but the heaviest stuff has been has been cleaned up, and there's a few they're still in that cleanup process, but. The majority of that has been cleaned up, and it's it's we're still undergoing that. And now we have the Earth mess, which is which are the, you know, the puppets, you know, of these of these other energies, and they are just floundering right now. They they've lost their power base, and and that whole grid has just been torn apart. And there's a whole fifth dimensional grid coming in, so they have no support energetically, consciously, and uh, and their empires are collapsing. You know, and people are waking up and saying, I'm not going to participate anymore. Uh, there's, there's just a huge awakening happening, a whole new renaissance happening. And, and we're, we're getting ready for all these new technologies to come out, healing technologies, fuelless energy technology, all this stuff is going to be coming out, you know, real soon because these old dynasties are actually imploding. You know, they're, they're imploding on themselves. As an astrologer, uh, I've been looking at the uh, Uranus-Pluto square that uh, has been with us for several years and should be clearing out by 2016 as Uranus moves beyond the, the orb, which is really, really cool. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what our new Earth is going to be like because from that point on, I think it's going to be a freer to start yeah. moving. Uh, and, and I think the, the end of it, of course, has been these earth changes that we're looking at. Um, but my question to you is a lot of people um, are still concerned. That they've got one foot in and one foot out. They're very concerned with their finances. They're very concerned about their health. Yeah. I think when you're healthy, you're happy. Or oh, yeah. happy, you're healthy. And you, at the very beginning, uh, during the introduction, talked about having been healed yeah. um, uh, cosmically magnificently um, do you address any of this at the ranch can you speak to our audience about what they might be able to do for themselves yeah um, well basically you know I'm not immune to, to what's going on I'm, I'm going through the same trials and tribulations everybody else you know the challenges economic challenges health challenges and everything else um, you know, because they've, they've taken an extreme interest in this place and, and we've been hit by everything. We get like triple chemtrail spraying, you know, here we, we get psychotronics hitting us. We have black helicopters flying over using all kinds of crazy devices. And so, so I've been totally targeted here, but for some reason I keep pulling out of it, you know, because of my help and my connections to the higher dimensional beings. So. So, and other, and other people here on the planet as well that have some of these other technologies they're helping. And, uh, you know, and, there, and there's some very nasty things that I hate to tell people, but there's, there's just been an incredible effort to, to dumb people down, to shorten your lifespan, to actually get rid of a lot of people on the planet. There's been a massive effort. And it's going, coming through the chemtrails, it's coming through the food, it's coming through the water. And, uh, you know, it's coming through devices like uh, uh, microwave devices and things like that. There's, it's just been a mass effort, you know, in, in, you know, going in this direction. And then people, people always ask me, well, why <clears throat> these people have families, they have, why would they do this to themselves? And they don't realize that these people are not <clears throat> really human anymore. They've, they've gotten rid of their humanness. And in their lust for power and wealth, they've turned, their soul is actually owned by these other beings that care nothing for humanity. And that's who's running them, running the show. And that's why they can do these things. Because these things are not human. They're inhuman. And the reason they're inhuman is because they're orchestrated by inhuman, non-human entities that, that really don't like humanity. But that's, that's being cleaned up right now. And I always say, you'll, you'll see the end when the chemtrails stop that's when you know we're done, you know, we're free of these, this nonsense. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of our own government is, you know, even our Air Force they have been duped into thinking they're doing the right thing with these chemtrails. But, you know, there's like reptilian viruses. There's all these weird things that are coming down in these chemtrails and they're not, 
they're not in our highest and best good. You know, barium, aluminum, and strontium, these are all heavy metals, they're very toxic, and uh, they collapse your immune system and really, really dumb us down. So, <clears throat> you know, this, this, people need to rise up and wake up and say enough, enough of this, you know, no more. And, and that's what I'm all about is planetary liberation, you know, awaken people, look, this is what's going on. You don't have to participate anymore. And it's time to rise up, you know, and stand up and take care, take care of business. And I think taking it on a, on a, a, a more local level, how would, I mean, yes, of course, take a stand for the truth. How yeah. would somebody who, and you know, if you're in that force field, you know it, you feel it, you know, you're sick. Uh, what can they do to protect themselves in the interim? Well, what I see basically, um, there's a lot of different things we can do. We need to do, uh, first of all, you know, process oriented therapy, get rid of any wounds or patterns or traumas, you know, that are holding our frequencies down. Right. Clear those up. We need to address our diet, you know, and, uh, and do a lot of uh, cleanses, you know, get, get rid of the heavy metals out of our system. There's all kinds of cleanses we can do. You know to do that and and start eating very close to the earth you know get away from processed foods and things like that and food should be your medicine and yeah. so the more you, yeah you understand about food and eating the right food your body's going to shift and change um there's so many different things and, and develop a daily practice of meditation or prayer whatever you want to call it you know you eat teach the game here which is a very very ancient form of, of qigong it's one of the most ancient ones and it's what the star nations do. It's what they practice. And so uh, it's a very simple form. And, and so we've tracked that, you know, from, from uh, Tibet and China to back to Egypt and then back to Lemuria. So that goes back to the star nations, you know, and the colonies. Um, there's, there's a lot of different things we can do. And, and we, we share those things here at the ranch. We teach people how to, how to, to get through this stuff. Now, you, you've got a program going on this summer at the ranch, correct? Yes. Will you tell us about it? Well, yeah, we've got, uh, uh, again, it's on the website. If you go to East City Collaborations, all the events are on there. And so we have many, many different programs. We have Michael Tellinger is going to be here speaking. Um, Laura Eisenhower is going, to, is going to be here. We have a big conference with some amazing speakers um, we have Alfred Weber and uh, uh, oh God, John Rappaport will be will be coming in on Skype, but you know, and we but we have some other. We have Atasha, and she's a, a Native American wisdom keeper, and myself, and and uh, Captain K. You know, he's part of the Mars colonies. Will be here. Um, I'm trying to think of the list. I don't have the list with me, but it's a it's a long list of speakers, and you can check that out on the website. But that's the second to the fifth. But during the conference at night, we do sky watches and the ships come in and put on a show for people, which is amazing. Uh, so although we have some awesome speakers, the energy is so incredible here. People come and, and we've had actually a lot of spontaneous healings happen here that people just can't explain where tumors disappear and broken wrists heal overnight and, and things like that. So that happens as well. But, you know, people come to me and go, thank you, thank you. And I go, that wasn't between me and you. That was between you and the spirit, you know, what happened, you know. So so if you know, people come here and they make their peace and, and we have a field you can do focus walks on. And people will walk the field and say, well, I've always been whole and healthy or I've always been abundant or whatever they're working on manifests. You know, we, we have this field of dreams. It's amazing. And that's where a lot of the healings take place. But um there's just, there's so much going on here. It's it's like uh, so many different things, and we have a lot of gardens. You know, we do a lot of gardens, and we we work with the nature intelligences, and we work with the cycles, you know, the, the moon cycles and things like that, and everything's organic. And I have a herd of yaks, you know, here as well, and uh, and so they're they're here. I have a huge bull, you know, yak, and he's a big teddy bear. If you know him, if you don't know him, you don't want to get out in the field because it's their field. You know, so we tell people, you know, don't uh, don't mess mess with them unless you know them. You know? But uh, uh, you know, just you know, it's typical ranch. You know, we have chickens and and cats and dogs and all the other stuff that goes along with the ranch and horses. Sounds like a piece of heaven. You know, it is. It's a little piece of heaven. You know, I've I've 
everything I've built here, I've tapped into the land and asked, you know, if it was okay and asked where to put things. And, and so it's very aligned with nature here. It's a very, everything is in balance. Oh, someday I will be there. Someday oh yeah. I'll be there. It's a life changing experience. People come here and they, some people, when they leave, they cry. They don't want to, they don't want to go home, you know? And I said, well, the idea is, is this is a template for you to come and see and experience and then to go out and build it yourself. You know, it's like, you know, when I built this, nobody came. At first, <laughs> I, was coming, I was by myself, you know, and, and you know that old field of dreams thing where they said, if you build it, they will come. You know? yeah. I always said what they really said, if you build it, you are dumb, you know, because nobody, nobody <laughs> came for a while. And then uh, finally, people just started coming and the word started getting out and and it just kept increasing. And now probably hundreds of thousands of people have been here over the years. Oh, man. Oh, well, and, and I know that you go out and give talks. You're going to be speaking at the Contact in the Desert uh, conference. And uh, the workshop you're giving sounds so intriguing to me. Yeah. Unless you change the title, The Who's Who of planetary liberation. James, please, I don't want to give away your workshop, but we please, please, please give us a little tidbit. Well, in the workshop, what we do, we start off, we clear any unseen, everybody that comes there is going to get cleared. And we clear out any attachments, any unseen negative influences. Would you tell us briefly how that, how you do that? Or is that something that you share only in person? Well, I'll tell you part of it, but some, some of it you have to be there because it's, it's a little outrageous. But basically, we, there's just a prayer that we do that we, we in conjunction with the masters and we bring them in and they, they mainly do, do the cleanup and the higher dimensional beings come in and just clean everything up, you know, and, and inviting them. And it, it's, a, it's, it's, an old, it's an old system, you know, that comes out of the TIC, the Teaching of the Inner Christ, and, and it's been altered a little bit because I've brought in Tibetan stuff and things in there. But, you know, we just welcome them in love and light. And we tell them they're healed and forgiven, lifted and enlightened, that they're filled and surrounded in the Christ light, and the Christ love. And we ask the beautiful many, you know, to take them to the perfect place. And, and it happens. I mean, they come in and they just clear it out. And so whatever you speak happens on their level. Because when you tell them they're filled and surrounded with the Christ light and the Christ love, they're in the mental planes and the non-physical planes and it happens instantly. And they have a choice to either heal or they go. They, they can't stay in that, in that energy. And then we start bringing in the different beings and said, okay, here's the planes. You want to feel their energy. They're coming in. You know, here's this group. Here's that group. And it's really nice because people have these openings and some people just start crying and they just, the energy comes in and they feel it coming down through their crown and, and, Feel it all over the bodies and everything, and they and they have their own firsthand experience, you know, of, of, of more of an energetic contact. And sometimes, you know, people get take pictures and there's beans. They get beans in the room, ten foot tall beans, you know, light beans. And you know, at the last at the um, International UFO Congress, when they were filming me on stage, people took pictures while I was doing my lecture. And a couple times, I turned into a light, just a light. I wasn't there. It's was just a bright green and, and blue light and you can see the microphone coming up to this place and it's kind of funny and then these beans would end up behind me and they're like 10 foot tall beans and they're they're uh and things like that and so some, a lot of people in the audience got photographs of that it was kind of amazing and i got some of them that is amazing yeah uh, to have a photograph because so much of this takes place as we know on the inner levels yeah. and Everybody wants to see what they look like. So uh, your your place really is magical. Oh, yeah. And people, you know, we have photographs of Guan Yin appearing here and Babaji and and the other masters, Kazekiel. And, and uh, I was trying to think of a beautiful photograph of Mary actually appearing here over a, a teacher's training class I was doing that was taken by a Taoist monk that was here named Khan. And, and so, I mean, we're actually photographing these beings that are actually appearing here and working with people. Awesome. Okay, so back to your workshop, the who's who of planetary liberation. I interrupted you. Please, yeah. pick up where you left off. Well, you know, the Pleiadians come in. There's the Orion Council of Light. They, they're very big, you know, here. Those are the two main ones that are doing the work here. 
and then you've got the Arcturians and the Andromedans and, and uh, the Syrians. And what's fun is when the feline beings come in, and, and this is a shocker for some people, but there are beings out there that are feline in nature and that humanoid felines. And uh, in, in India, they call them Narisha, and they were the protectors of the gods and, and Sekhmet in Egypt and things like that. But these beings actually do exist. And they're there to enforce universal law, and they're very powerful beings and uh, very, very loving, you know. And, and the seventh dimensional ones are actually lion beings. They're, uh, they're humanoid lion beings, and they're very, very powerful, very beautiful, but also very funny. They're hilarious. They have an incredible sense of humor because they have nothing to fear. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I asked them how they how they deal with, you know, the reptilian beings, you know, how they work with that. And, and uh, I taught, they said, Oh, we just throw them down and rub their belly, you know, cause these guys are 17 foot tall beings and, and they, they have magnetic light bodies or seven dimensional beings. And what do you do with that? I mean, you, you can't kill a light being, you know, and it's something that big and that powerful, you know, if it wants to, you know, it does whatever. It's like the whole thing. Where's a 500 pound, pound gorilla sleep, you know, wherever it wants, you know? So, but they're not, they're not aggressive. They're not pushy and they're, they're very, and it, they take their time getting to know you. So people don't freak out. They're oh not, man. I want to meet them. I, yeah. I'm such a cat lover. I mean, I'm just, you know, there's a connection. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. You probably had past lives there. You have. Oh, I'm sure. Speaking of past lives, let me ask you this. Um, I have read various people who have been contacted uh, say that, and I can't speak for every contact, but that the uh, extraterrestrials with whom we make contact today are our future selves. How does that fit into your system? Well, you know, it can be like everything is happening at once, basically. Right especially in the higher dimensions there's no time and it's just not even relative you know on those dimensions so everything is happening at once and and it could be future you know it could be you know i have a palladian that comes here and her name's blagi and she's from two million years ahead of us in the future and so she comes back from two million years and she's already a master teacher there so you can imagine what kind of energy is that you're working with and she comes and she helps out here that was one of my first contacts but you know as 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 powerful and wise as they are they're very very loving and very understanding and non-judging and you know i asked her i said you must see us like monkeys she said no we just see you as as us in, in the past you know we had to go through the same trials and tribulations and to get to where we are now and and we don't we don't hold that against you you know we don't we just see that you're, you know, awakening gods and goddesses, basically. They just forgot who you are. Oh, how beautiful. Oh, how gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to, in, in the, the little time that we have left, I wanted to ask you about your ambassador program and what that entails, because I think people are going to be very interested in that. Well, what we do is we bring... Uh, we start off again, we, we always start off by kind of teaching different levels and we teach people what not to work with, you know, and there's certain how to maintain your self authority, how to heal unseen negative influences and things like that in the beginning. And we clear all that energy out and that's just the ground floor. And then it just goes up from there and it gets different groups keep, keep coming in fifth dimensional, sixth dimensional, seventh dimensional beings keep coming in. And it kind of raises people's frequency throughout the whole weekend. And uh, usually at the end, like the Andromedans come in or, or, or something. It's interesting, like Mary, Mary Magdalene is, is, she dances in these Andromedans. It's, it's really interesting, but she'll come in. And she does these like vortex dances and goes around the room. And some people actually see her and some people can't, you know, but she'll bring in these energies, these Andromedan energies, which are mythologically known as archangels. And, and things like that. Because they, they, they're eight to 10 foot tall beings with magnetized light bodies. They live in a, in a, in a holographic light universe is where they live. Uh, the Pleiadians, when they ran into the Andromedans, they asked them to be there to lead them. And the Andromedans said no. And they, they couldn't understand why they said no. And they said, you need to lead yourself. And they said, but we'll advise you. And, and so 
it's one of the highest councils is the Andromedan Council that, that, that they're an advisory council that advise a lot of the other beings and are helping out to, to clean up the consciousness and the stuff happening, you know, liberate the earth. You know, it, as a radio host right now, listening to what you're saying, I'm, I'm, I'm in such a flow with it. And then I have to get into my left brain and think about a question that our audience might be interested in. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm throwing it back to you, James. We have a few minutes left. Will you please share with us any thoughts that you have, any inspirational thoughts for our audience? Yeah. The, I'll tell you what, when I, when I work with these beings and everybody goes, what's, they want this big message to come through and everything else. And it's the same message that all the masters have been giving us for millennium, you know, start being kind to each other and be kind to the planet and cooperate and work together and unify, you know, you can still keep the diversity, but you can unify around universal principles that are necessary for a healthy society and environment. And, you know, they, they're very concerned with the condition of our consciousness here and the condition of our environment. And they respect all life. They have a, they see the creator in all creation and they want us to act accordingly. So, you know, that's been basic their message. And, and, uh, and, you know, a lot of times they, the more you work with them, the more they can they can help you understand yourself. Basically, they're just here to empower you to understand, you know, how vast we really are, and that we are multidimensional beings. You know, we're not just a body and a personality. We're a spirit that has a body and a personality, and that spirit has many facets, many dimensions to them. But you know, we've been all over the universe and as an eternal soul. You know, we've been in the Pleiades and the Andromedans and we started at the source and dropped down through all the dimensions to get to here. So, so they know us, they remember us, you know, before we came here and got lost, you know, so uh-huh. it's, uh, you know, they're, they're just big cosmic cheerleaders. You know, they just really want us to wake up. And, and lately we've had these Anunnaki beings show up, and they're the benevolent Anunnaki. And, and they said they're here to inspire us to lead ourselves from our own heart and soul. And they're not here to take anything and, and they said they're here to right or wrong. And, and so they're here to clean up the fallen Anunnaki and the problems that happened from that. And, and the, the, also the, some of the fallen Anunnaki actually made packs and deals with some low-level ATs that have been creating problems forever on the earth. And so they're, they're part of the mass cleanup as well. So, so it's there's just so much going on right now. It's just it's some really exciting times coming up. And some of us are... are are just going to go to our cubicle and go to our job and not even be aware of it, you know, and some are just going to, that open to it are just going to have some amazing experiences. Oh, wow. Well, I'm sure so many of our listeners and viewers are open to it and are ready for these wonderful experiences. Um, Let me give out your contact information again. Uh, The website which is probably the best and easiest way for you to get all this wonderful information is eseti.org, E-C-E-T-I, eseti.org. And James, oh, we've got a couple of minutes. I forgot to ask you, what about your new book that is yet untitled? Uh, What are you... Can you tell us what you're a sneak peek on what you're writing about? Well, you know, I'm kind of writing about it's going to be kind of heavy because I'm going to cover this whole Archon network and who they are and what they've done in the past and, and which groups and, and these. And then I'm going to go into the higher dimensions and, and uh, it's kind of like a manual, like a master's manual. And it goes far beyond, you know, any religious program or anything else is saying, okay, this is what you're dealing with and this is how you deal with it, you know, and how you move and maintain your self authority and, uh, you know, self mastery. So, so it's going to be covering a lot of that. And, uh, and it's kind of like a Pleiadian perspective on what's, what's happening here. And, and, uh, you know, and I think by the time I write, write the book, most of it's going to be cleaned up. Hopefully. Hopefully so. I can't wait to read book. Yeah, so we don't repeat history. It's a good, it'd be a good history book. But. It would be a good, yeah, that's a great way of looking at it. James, yeah. I can't thank you enough for being my guest today. It has been such a joy to finally 
touch base <laughs> with you. Um, I'll be looking forward to uh, the uh, contact in the desert uh, CDs or what, whatever they're going to do there. And once again, beautiful work. Thank you for being my guest today. Oh, thank you so much for having me on the show and keep up the great work you're doing as well. Thank you so much, dear. And I hope that everybody out there has enjoyed meeting James uh, as much as I have. Some of you have met him. This is my first time. So I hope you've enjoyed the show and I hope you'll join me next week when once again, we move into the magic. Until then, remember,